G'day, my name's Mark. I like to make furniture out of recycled timber, mostly pallets. Okay, sticker sponsor shout out is Justin from Byers Woodworking in America. Uh, he's an international, obviously. His sticker will end up on the wall. It's somewhere lost, but he's a huge supporter. I thank you very much. Appreciate the sticker when it gets here. Alrighty, so this build is the full build of the hallway table. I've got two other vids. One is just on how I make the bricks, and the other one is how I create the waterfall feature. So feel free to go and have a gander at those uh, after you watch this one. Okay, first of many check squares, really important for a good glue up. Okay, for this one, I'm just gonna use my workbench because I know it's nice and flat. I've got some grease proof paper lied down, laid down. Uh, so the glue squeezes out, I'll lift it off and then I get to clean up both sides. Um, but yeah, I use the bench to clamp it all down, get it nice and square. Happy days. So it's simply a case of having a good look at the colours, uh, just cutting them to size. Most of this stuff's going to get used, so um, you don't really have to measure too much at all. And then pretty much it's a case of glue it all together. So there's plenty of gluing surface, um, tap it all into place and get ready to clamp. All right, so these clamps here, it's just stopping it from lifting and keeping my first straight edge. Uh, then I've got my bar clamps on, pull it all together, and another clamp on this side to stop that then picking up. And that's pretty much it. Tons of gluing surface in there. There are a few lips here and there, like here. Um, and that's where I do give it a whack with the bell sander. Because way too wide to go through a planer, and I've got a waterfall on the other end. Uh, you'll also notice I don't use biscuit joints. Um, there's so much gluing surface, it's not needed. The biscuits are really for aligning. I will use them in the future for other things, but not right now. Some of these bricks can get a bit tight when they're going into that groove. Um, you can just knock it back with the plane, which is the first time I've even used this thing, and I'm shit at it, but it did the job. Normally, I just use my belt sander in the vise, and that does the same thing. If you want to check out the greatest workbench ever made, though, go and have a look at um, Cuffy's Woodwork Aussie Ocker workbench Jesus that thing is unreal solid unlike mine it's all over the shop alrighty gonna move on to the drawers just so you know they bring me no joy but I'm still gonna show you how I do it all right so there's probably some check square gold that could go on right here but I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it be on this one because there's just honestly there's too many I know Pete Beardsley's hanging for it but let's just watch along um, Pretty simple, I've just got some jigs on the table just to help me get all this stuff nice and square because that is the secret sauce to making the draw slides run properly, is a nice square cabinet. What I will mention though, you'll notice there's basically like three boxes rather than some long pieces of melamine. This is all recycled material and what I do dig is see that sort of off-white colour? That is from a kitchen uh, from a dude whose house was flooded in Townsville, in the Townsville floods. He's the dude that's actually buying this cabinet, so it's a little bit of coming back at him. So he donated the kitchen to me. I've used it for everything. Now it's gonna end up back in his house in this cool hallway table. I've just thrown these extra two chipboard screws in, so just to take a bit of the load off that one pocket hole uh, in there, because if they do lift this cabinet or move it around the house, um, that's probably the most unsupported screw, that one just there. It's just a backup and I think worthy to chuck a couple in. Hey, that was a shit idea. Um, some of this melamine is a bit old and it's not top quality, so I've, it actually opened up, defeated the purpose altogether. So I've just put another piece in and I'm just going with an extra couple of pocket holes. That'll be more than enough um, to support it if people are lifting it, the cabinet, from this position right here. Okay, I've got to figure out the width of my drawers. So I've got the drawer slides in. I'll have the two side panels of the drawers. Now, there is an expensive tool that'll help you measure th this really accurately, or you can just get yourself two scraps of wood and slide them in put a clamp on and there is your distance to go and take over to your table saw. You can measure it. Uh, what I'm going to do is check all my drawers because you know me, there's a good chance that 
they might be slightly different. Alrighty, so I know it is very exciting watching someone cut up some melamine, but all I am trying to show here that is I'm using the existing dimensions of the pieces to help create all the other pieces of the drawers so I get it right. They're all exactly the same and I end up with a nice result of drawers that actually work. Okay, one good thing about working with this melamine is it's all the exact same thickness and that is perfect for using itself as all the templates to get the right dimensions of your widths of the drawers, taking into consideration the thickness of the board and you end up with exactly the same pieces, which is cool. Okay, so I learnt this clamping hack off David Stanton Woodwork. He's an Australian, he has thousands of videos and he's very knowledgeable. If you wanna see this done properly, um, go and check out his video on how he makes drawers. Um, you're certainly gonna learn may, way more than you are here. But this is the gist, you just clamp it all together. So the bottom's in place. Uh, you can then use more clamps to bring everything into square and nice and flush and then you just chuck your pocket holes in. Alrighty, so this is take two on the soft close. Take three. Okay, it's not perfect. Now, what I have done is I made them too tight. So I've, let me show you, hang on a second. Okay, just on this one side, I've run the whole drawer through the table saw and I've taken off less than a millimetre just so that slide sits in. And that was just enough to um, let these drawers slide a bit nicer like that. So that's, um, that's good enough for me. So I'm just using this little spacer to get these runners the same height off the ground. I was originally thinking the runner would be aligned with the bottom of the drawer but that would actually lift the drawer up too high and waste a lot of space. So I'm just going with this routine. Got the old sharpened up chisel, thanks to Down Under Woodworks, that little tip. And I'm just marking a hole. And that's enough for these tiny screws to bite in. Right, all right, welcome back. So um, tipping a lot of you might have skipped through the drawer section because that was pretty exciting and probably not why you're here there's definitely some better videos out there anyway so as i said earlier the waterfall feature edge it's a whole video uh, by itself where i explain all this good stuff that's going on here um so go and check that one out because it's 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 very interesting to be quite honest um and i think you'll like it so please go and watch it cheers and if you do happen to watch it, you'll see me doing this technique and it does come with a few warnings. So just be cautious if you're gonna have a crack at that. Uh, spoiler alert though, so this is my first time using the biscuits on the waterfall with the 45. And um, I'm just gonna let you know that it works. It's cool and I'll probably do it again. Righto, there's me big green 90 degrees. They are helping me out, get it, getting it nice and square. It's essential. Dig it. Don't worry about those gaps. I ran out of melamine. I just need these this supporting structure going here. If I find some more, I'll remake it, but it, it doesn't really matter. No one's gonna ever be in there. All good. What I learned from my big ass bench that I made is having a nice flat surface to lay these bricks actually works a treat. So I lay down the grease proof paper uh, build the top, pull it apart, clean up the slab, and then put this frame back underneath. Um, that, it seems to work pretty well. It saves you, a lot, saves you a lot of grief of those pieces falling, moving, you know what I mean? A quick tip if you are having a crack at this, um, just make sure your board you're working on, you can actually get your clamps in to hold those sides to stop them curling up. So this is an old kitchen chop. I just chopped it out so I could get that clamp in there, which That'll do me, so she's all good. Okay, I've just attached the drawer unit to the slab work 
uh, via some screws in the side here. That was all very exciting. Um, now I'm gonna lay the bricks across the top. I'll then remove this, clean up all the slab work, then put this back on. Okay, I've cut the final pieces uh, to now join up the two ends. Um, I used to hit these with a belt sander where it used to get pretty tight uh, or just a hand plane. I just started setting up the belt sander again and realized I have a jointer, dickhead. Anyway, I wouldn't have a jointer. It's an expensive tool, it was gifted to me. A lot of people don't have jointers, so the other ways are perfectly fine. Um, as some of these bricks will get a little bit tight in these sort of sections here. Um, all right, it's gonna glue it all together. We're getting pretty close. I do put a bit of glue on the on the butt joints there, but it's, it's not really doing a lot because it's very hard to get a tight joint unless you are clamping from the other ends. Uh, but for the way I'm doing it this particular time, that's not really gonna work. All the strength is coming in the bricks as it all layers and clamps together. So I'm not too concerned about that. All right, so I've become a big fan of the two by speed and the shop sounds. I can get away with it in winter, but in summer, 4,000 degrees, may not happen. I might have to change back to the music. All right, so that's all clamped up. Uh, it's it's definitely got some upsy downsies, which you'll see here. But as long as they are higher than my original corner, because that is the reference point on either end, uh, this middle area, that can get sanded flat, and then we'll have a nice smooth tabletop. All right, time to do the draw fronts. I bought this project panel from Bunnings uh, and it is the perfect size that I can balls this up at least once. Okay, draw front. So I've clamped all three draw fronts together and I'm just gonna go with this routine so that my hand pulls are all exactly the same. Yep, drill straight through those into your workbench. That's all good, I'm gonna replace it anyway. All right, so um, two holes, self-explanatory, and then over to the table saw. I'm just gonna sneak up on those little key holes to get the uh, side edges. Uh, then I can increase the depth of the blade and go warp speed and clear all that material out, um, just like this. Look at that. If only it were that quick. Alrighty, more cool shop sounds, bit of chisel action. That's pretty cool. And don't hate on me. I know I'm chiseling towards the pecker, but I'm using my fingers as a break and it's just taking a tiny little bit away. So I'm not gonna die. Okay, I'm gonna finish this one with just an oil-based poly, um, just a generic brand. I'll mix, mix it up in the Nutribullet, not with the actual machine, just with a stick and a bit of turf to thin it out, just to create a wipe-on poly. Um, so I think that's all this one really needs. It, it turns out pretty cool. All right, so check this out. Um, again, the, this is all pallets. They are Merbau pallets. They're about seven meters long. I've got a heap of them at the moment. Um, and they, that's where most of this awesome color is. Uh, there's no pine in it because we wanted to get as dark as possible on this one and pine cops a bit of unnecessary hate. This block here is just to allow me to actually get some grip on that clamp. Um, but the beauty of having little handhold cutouts is you can actually clamp the draw front on in this fashion. No bullshit, this is the first attempt, because it's compulsory. I hate drawers. All right, uh, that is it. Uh, I've got to get down low, because I always cut my head off. Uh, there are two more videos on this one, which I might have mentioned earlier on, on the bricks and on the waterfall. Uh, go and check those ones out if you want a bit more detail. Hopefully you enjoyed this one. Uh, thank you very much for getting on board, following the channel, supporting, commenting, and all the good stuff you all know about. I appreciate it. Thanks very much. 
All right, so uh, if you're still here, just wanted to say, you probably know it's a bit more talking, a bit more FaceTime from me. Um, that's come from your feedback, your comments. If you still like it, let me know. If you want me to shut up, well, let me know. But don't call me a dickhead in the comments. It'll probably end up in the spam bin. Anyway, thanks a lot. See you later.